Hey right, guys, uh, so we're going to get right back into it where we have 6.2, sum difference, and double angle identities. And the sum and difference identities for sine, cosine, and tangent can be used to determine the exact values of some sine, cosine, and tangent ratios. Um, basically, all of this stuff is on your formula sheet, so you will be able to see it. But if you remember in algebra, we have the distributive property where um, the 3 would distribute to both the a and b, giving us 3a and 3b. What we're effectively saying is when something is embedded in a function, and in this specific case, uh, if it's embedded in a trig function, the distributive property does not apply. And realistically, if you just quickly look at this, uh, on my left-hand side, this one would actually equal root 3 over 2. And we can see that that won't equal 3 over 2 on my right-hand side. So just watch out for that. Instead, what we need to do is we need to look at these bad boys right here. Now, again, this will be on your formula sheet um, that I hopefully attached to this class. If I didn't, I'll do it right now. But... What we're basically going to do is we're going to take these and apply them. Now, one thing that I do want to bring up that is of note, if we look at sine A plus B, and then if we look at sine A minus B, we'll see that the actual only difference is within that plus and that minus sign right there. And the same thing goes for cos A plus B, as well as cos A minus B, that the main difference is the plus and minus right there. And again, for tan, we notice that the pluses and the minuses are the predominant difference that exists between them. So, we're going to simplify this using the sum and the identity principles that we have above. So I'd recommend, if possible, you guys have a formula sheet and your unit circle beside you. Um, I'm not going to go through the trouble of looking up these numbers. I'm just sort of going to show you guys how this works, and we're going to whip through this. But we have sine pi by 2 minus x. So using the identity from above, it's sine a cos b minus cos a sine b. So I get sine pi by 2 cos x, all minus cos pi by 2 sin x, which would give me 1 multiplied by cos x minus 0 multiplied by sin x. Again, I'm getting these values from the unit circle, so that would just end up equaling cos x. Uh, cos 90 plus x. So you see that little degree symbol right there. So that just means that we're working with degrees, uh, not with radians. But again, this gives me cos 90 cos x all minus sine 90 sine x. And that ends up being 0 multiplied by cos x minus 1 multiplied by sine x, which would end up giving me negative sine x. Uh, looking at the tan, and tan is always a bit funkier. Tan works out to be a bit more complicated when we look at it, but it's still not that bad. So I get tan x plus tan pi by 6 all over 1 minus tan x tan pi by 6. So rocking this out on the unit circle, uh, what we'd get is we get 10x, and then that would be plus 1 over root 3, and then this would all be over 1 minus 10x multiplied by 1 over root 3. And we remember that there's no cancellations that can occur right here, so we're just going to get 10x plus 1 over root 3, all over 1 minus 1 over root 3, 10x. Now, realistically, where a lot of the value in these double angle uh, identities and formulas come from, is if we have to find the exact value for things that are not on the unit circle. So, 
If we look at this example right here, where I have the cos 165 degrees, well, 165 is not on the unit circle. But if I can find two numbers that add up to 165 or subtract to 165 that are on the unit circle, then I can use my double angle identities to get an exact answer. And lo and behold, what we get is we get that this could be equal to cos of 45 degrees plus 120 degrees. Now, with this, there are multiple there are multiple ways to get those numbers. You will always end up with the same answer. It's just there's a lot of different ways that we can add or subtract to get to these values. So from here, what we're going to get is we're going to get using the double angle identity, cos of 45 all multiplied by cos of 120 all minus the sine of 45 all multiplied by the sine of 120. And doing that will give me 1 over root 2 multiplied by negative 1 over 2 minus 1 over root 2 multiplied by root 3 over 2, which will end up giving me, and now just running through a bit of the algebra wagon, negative 1 over 2 root 2, and then that'll be minus root 3 over 2 root 2, which would end up equaling negative 1 minus root 3 all over 2 root 2. Now, in a case like this, because we have that root 2 on the bottom, what you'll sometimes see is the answer rationalized. So remember with the rationalization, all that we do is I'd multiply the top and the bottom by root 2 just to keep the root out of the denominator, which would give me negative root 2 minus root 6 all over 4. Now, we're only going to make the rationalization for the simple ones. Uh, as we'll see in a further example, we'll get to a further example where we're not going to actually end up rationalizing it, but that will come when we get to the tan example in C. So now, we see the sine of 5 pi by 12. Now this one could get a bit trickier, and if you need, you can just convert to degrees. So if you need, you can go 5 pi by 12, and then multiply that by 180 over pi. Um, that's just sort of reminding you guys of what the conversion is when we're doing this. And then what will end up happening is this will give us that we're looking for 75 degrees. So in some cases, it can work out that it'll be easier to look at it in terms of degrees or radians. Now, I'm going to do this sort of both ways. So I could say this would equal sine of pi by 6 plus pi by 4. But we also know that that's exactly equal to the sine of 30 degrees plus 45 degrees, because that angle right there was 75 degrees. So I'll just continue on with the radians. I get sine pi by 6 all multiplied by cos pi by 4 plus cos pi by 6 all multiplied by sine pi by 4, which will give me 1 over 2 multiplied by negative 1 over root 2, all added to root 3 over 2 multiplied by 1 over 
root 2. And this will end up giving me, just skipping a couple of steps here, 1 plus root 3 all over 2, root 2. Now again, if I wanted to rationalize that, so multiplying the top and the bottom by root 2 there, uh, this would give us root 2 plus root 6 all over Finally, uh, we get down to the tan here again. Now, again, if you guys want, you can convert that, and we convert that to 165 degrees, which would equal 45 degrees plus 120 degrees. Um, or you could keep this as just being in the radians. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to keep it in the radians. Uh, I'm going to keep it consistent with the answer key that you guys have, or with the notes key that you guys have. So I get pi by 4 all over 2 pi by 3, which would equal the tan of pi by 4 plus tan of 2 pi by 3. And then this would all be over 1 minus tan pi by 4 multiplied by tan 2 pi by 3. So once I go through and I punch all of these out, looking at my unit circle, I get 1 minus root 3 all over 1 plus root 3. Now in this case, we're not going to rationalize. And this is what I said, if we get that complicated base, I don't want you guys to worry about rationalization. You won't get docked any marks for it. Uh, when we come back, we're going to look at the rest of the examples.